Ladies and gentlemen, in this RedGamingTed.com video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Steam Autumn Sale for the 25th of November. So today it marks some pretty great games actually on offer, including for many of you probably going to be the highlight, and that is Dishonored. It's available for £14.99, 50% off. As an aside, Gamers Gate are also running a sale. Um, I don't know if it's still running. It was yesterday when I looked, and they had actually Dishonored for the same price. I actually forgot to mention it in yesterday's deal section. Oops. Anyway, um, I'm sure many of you know about Dishonored, and it, for many of you it's probably one of the better games. It's basically a cyber stealth kind of game with action and adventure characteristics, and it's a very good game in honesty. In terms of a PC port, however, it's somewhat hit and miss. It does have some pretty cool stuff, and there are some mods available which do drastically improve the lighting. But in terms of textures, you're going to notice that overall, they're not that high quality. In fact, they're fairly lowish in quality in some areas. That's not to say that the game looks aesthetically ugly, but it is to say that you do wish that they'd gone that extra little mile for the PC version. And particularly when you're getting close up, textures look a bit blurry. However, in terms of controls and so on, it's very, very tight on the PC version. And also, hotkeys and everything else are there, so you don't have to worry. Of course, the game does support 360 pads, should you really desire to do that. I'm unsure why you would. I do have a first impressions look at this available on RGT, as well as the odd other video here and there. So, if you are wondering whether you should purchase it, I would recommend checking that one out. Uh, next up, and probably one of the better ones actually, is Batman Arkham City. This is the Game of the Year edition. There's also the regular Arkham City, which is a few pounds cheaper, I believe about £1.50 cheaper. But I'd probably recommend you get the G-O-T-Y version, which is 75% off or 4 99 I was just speaking to Amata and she's basically crumbling at the seams because she has so many games to play and now wants to add this one to collection. Batman Arkham City was a bit of an interesting one when it was released. I've mentioned a few times on my channel, I've been fairly vocal actually about how pissed I was at the rather staggered launch. For one, it was launched in the US before the UK, which is basically a big no-no for me. Um, and it did not earn Rockstar any points. Oh, should I say Rockstar? What the heck am I talking about? Rocksteady any points for that little uh, catastrophe. And indeed, to play it early, I had to VPN using, uh, well, actually using an American server that I have access to for work. And it was a bit of a catastrophe. And even with the US release date, may I add, there was some confusion. Indeed, I believe it was a delayed about one week after it was initially thought it was going to be. And that is after, of course, it was delayed numerous times because they basically said that NVIDIA physics was going to be put in. And it, of course it was. And then optimizations were added. While all that was true, when it was finally released, there were some major frame rate issues with the DirectX 11 mode. DX9 ran perfectly, but DX11 basically caused any systems to be crumbling at the seams. Mine wasn't that bad, apart from one or two small fights with the Joker, where, and I shit you not, I got like nine frames or three frames a second at one particular point, which was down from about 40 to 60. Anyway, times are changing, and there have been numerous patches, and I'm pleased to report that anyone who did not purchase the game then will not have to worry about these issues, and indeed they can just enjoy the game as was. It is a very, very good game, and it ends making you scream that you want more. The Game of the Year edition also contains the Harlequin DLC, which I'm yet to actually complete, despite the fact that I bought it on the last team sale, which kind of more for me, huh? Um, anyway, as I was saying, it is very similar to Arkham Asylum, and if you've played Arkham Asylum, if not, you should definitely pick that up as well, and I would definitely recommend you play, play and complete Arkham Asylum before you do City, because otherwise you won't know what the hell's going on story-wise. In terms of graphics, writing and so on, Mark Hamill does an absolutely amazing job at the Joker, as you would expect, and there are some incredible characters and artwork and styles. Some people may put this one off as a bit angsty because, you know, it's Batman and so on. I absolutely love the game, and some people also complain that the combat is too easy because it's so free-flowing. I would say more for them. You haven't really played it. The actual thing about Batman Arkham City isn't 
necessarily that you can play it easily. It's the fact that you can play it fluidly and beautifully. Also, I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure that Arkham City had the difficulty level raised a notch or two um, from Arkham Asylum. And the folks themselves seem to be a bit more accurate in their weapons, which can be good for those of you who are seeking a challenge. Anyway, I could talk about this game for quite a while, as I really like it. I do actually have a full look on this game, I believe, so you might want to check it out on RGT. Next one, Sonic Generations. I mentioned in my Sonic Adventure 2 video yesterday that Sonic Adventure 2 was not that great, and I recommended several times Sonic the Hedgehog Episode 4 uh, Sonic Hedgehog 4 Episode 2, I'm sorry, and Sonic Generations. And indeed, a while ago, we actually gave away Sonic Generations to a lucky win on RGT um, for a competition. And to be honest with you, Sonic Generations is a fantastic game. There are two distinct ways to play it, or should I say two distinct game types. One is the 3D, which is similar to Sonic Adventure and those titles. And then there are the 2D sections. Now, personally... I am more a fan of the 2D styles. 2D styles are basically like you would remember on, say, the Genesis slash Mega Drive era. And they are 2D, obviously, and they have an incredible amount of complexity in the background. It looks really beautiful, and yet it still looks like you will remember the games. Um, in other words, it doesn't look totally different. The levels are not completely reimagined, and you're definitely going to think, huh, I remember that section, or this looks really familiar. The 3D sections are basically the same zones, but, well, in 3D. And despite my fact that I actually really did not like Sonic Adventure 2 for the Dreamcast, and indeed the, its follow-ups, I really do like Sonic Generations, and 3D version is still fun. I, as I said, prefer the 2D versions, in honesty, but that isn't to say that it plays terribly on 3D. It actually works really well, and to be honest with you, if they released all 3D Sonics like that, it would actually be more than acceptable and I'd actually be extremely happy. It's also worth noting that this game is a love affair to Sonic fans. In other words, it's a love letter from Sega saying, hey, you know what, guys? We know we've taken Sonic out and um, taken him to the tool shed and beat him mercilessly, literally until his eyes are black and, you know, blood is coming out of him and we know we're forcing you guys to watch the abuse we're giving him despite the fact that you love him. But hey, now we're actually going to give him a cookie and give him a good game, and you guys as well. So it's actually a really decent title. I would recommend picking it up, if only to support the fact it's a good Sonic game, if you are a Sega fan. It doesn't play that well on keyboard and a mouse, as you would expect. But on pad, 360 pad particularly, it plays absolutely brilliantly, and I would recommend it. Next one, Orcs Must Die, the second one. This is actually a really good deal. It's $2.99, and you know what? I'm not a massive fan of Orcs Must Die, if I'm honest. Um, I never played the first one, and I just didn't think I was going to like it. I saw it on Steam sale a few times, even for like £2, and I just didn't do it. And the reason, of course, is because I just don't want to buy games if I'm not going to play them. It's really pointless. Although, I have done it a few times. I have got a few games on my Steam list, and by a few, I mean quite a few, that I'm just never, ever going to play. Uh, but Orcs Must Die, I just, you know, wasn't interested in. However, Orcs Must Die 2, I decided, you know what, I'm going to cover for RGT anyway. And it's actually fairly good. Oh, by the way, there's also a two-pack of this one, uh, which basically has, well, guess what? Two copies of the game. Uh, this is a complete version, by the way, for $7.49. Or you can just get the complete pack, which has some DLC in there, and that's $4.74. Um, I haven't played the DLC, so I can't tell you just how good it is. I would recommend doing a bit of research on it first to let you know if it is actually worth it for you. Um, I actually quite like the gameplay of Orcs Must Die. It It's kind of brainless in one sense, you know, with the action. It's very kind of a balls to the wall. But on the other hand, you have to be very um, strategic in where you place your traps. And indeed, scoring high scores and so on is one of the challenges to the game. And doing things really well without your defences being destroyed is very cool. I would recommend, if you're unsure about this one, to check out the RGT video on my channel, of course. If only for the fact that I was really unsure about the game and I got converted somewhat. I would also recommend it because... 
it lets you know from a complete novice perspective of whether you would actually enjoy the game again to it really quickly. And to be honest with you, the learning curve of the game is fairly quick and pretty cool. So, next one, though, there are only two titles left, and I have no idea why I've done them in this order, but there you have it. Civilization 5. Civ 5, of course, is a sequel to a long lineage of games. I believe everyone knows just how old Civ stretches back into the pantheons of history. Civilization is actually one of those titles I've never played. I don't know how I've not managed to, and goodness knows how long. I think it's just because of the game's style. There's something about the way you move the pieces, shall we say. Um, I will, however, tell you one thing, and I will tell you it with Ernst, and that is basically Ernest is that um, the game is incredibly well received, and by incredibly, I mean very, very. It also has Steam Workshop functionality. There's also a ridiculous amount of DLC. You can also pick up the Game of the Year edition, which of course has the DLC with it. That's 749 if you want the complete game of the year, or if you just want the regular one, in other words, if you're not willing to dip your feet in too much, you can just pick up the regular uh, Civ, which would be 499. I probably would recommend, because there is a lot of DLC, there's like 12 pieces or something ridiculous, then it might be worth you picking up the rest of the Game of the Year edition, uh, but I'll leave that one in your capable hands, of course, because after all, you know how you want to spend your money. Next one, a pretty good deal. The second guy saw him pretty thirsty. After I'm talking your ear off, and also I've been to the gym as well, which doesn't really help. Torchlight 2. Now... There are people who absolutely despise Torchlight 2 and love Diablo or a, another game. And there are those who say that, you know, Torchlight 2 is everything Diablo should have been because Diablo's endgame is not that great. And then there are those who say that both are great. I have not played Torchlight 2 that much. Um, I did do a first impressions look and maybe another actually on RGT. And I've played Diablo 3 somewhat. Um, I've got a trial account. Uh, I've played, put a couple of videos on that as well. To be honest with you, I know that Diablo and Torchlight are both fantastic games. I can't tell you from the end game perspective of Diablo 3 how it is. I have heard from both friends and forums, which obviously I frequent, such as MMO Champion for example, that the end game of Diablo 3 is not that great. I've heard it's a bit of a gear grind. I don't know whether Blizzard are intending to release anything extra, but in terms of Torchlight, which of course is more important because that's what's on offer here, it's a fairly good price. It's 749 as I've mentioned. That's a pretty good deal. Um, there is a four pack available for £22.49. Uh, that's pretty good. Which, of course, allows you to play with, well, guess what, four players. There's one small issue I have with Torchlight 2. Um, and it's a very weird one, I'm willing to grant. But it's at least to me quite powerful. And that is the classes don't jump out at me. I mentioned this actually on a Guild Wars 2 video. I really love Guild Wars 2, but I haven't gotten high enough level yet. I've got a few low-level characters because I can't really like the classes. I like a few of them in terms of, yeah, they're pretty cool to play, but I can't find one that I'm absolutely like, wow, this character is absolutely fantastic. With Torchlight, I have the same thing. I look at the characters, and the classes rather, and I can't think to myself, wow, this this class is the one for me. And I feel really bad about that. Not because, you know, I, you know, I'm a guilty kind of person. I just feel bad because I know I really want to play the game. Um, and I probably should just, you know, get my ass down and then just, you know, knuckle down with a character. Either way, the game itself is really good. And there are a lot, and by a lot, I mean a ridiculous amount of patches for it. Um, it's pretty much patched every, you know, couple of weeks or something ridiculous. I would recommend checking that out, if only for the fact it's really cheap. And if you're looking for a Diablo type of game, but you don't want to plump down the money for Diablo 3, which is understandable, it is fairly expensive. Although I will say that the trial is unusually kind. Um, I think WoW's trial is really limited. It's up to level 20, but to be honest with you, to get level 20 in WoW, it'll take you like 5 minutes. I'm, okay, I exaggerate a little bit. But Diablo 3 is probably more playtime, in honesty. Uh... 
So yeah, Torchlight 2 is a really good game and I would recommend it. As I've said, I have a slight issue because I personally don't really like the classes 100%. But, anyway, I'll leave that one to you. Next one, uh, Metro 2033. 20, These will be under the Flash deals. These have got about three and a half hours, so I might as well cover them. I really like Metro. And, <coughs> excuse me. And um, for the 75% off for 374, it could be worth getting. There's, of course, going to be a sequel out soon. There's nothing spectacular to say about this one. It does support NVIDIA physics. Um... The performance on the game is not bad. I have seen better performances on games. I've noticed physics in particular does absolutely batter the frame rate. I am unsure whether that's um, because of just the quality of the game or something else. I have a feeling it's not 100% well optimized. Although I haven't really researched or done that much testing into it. If I'm completely and utterly honest. A beefy system is recommended for this one. Uh, I would recommend checking out, however. It's really cool. Next one, a Bioshock. Bioshock 2, shall I say. Bioshock 2, in honesty, is not as good as the first one. By the way, you can pick up the Bioshock franchise, which shockingly includes both Bioshock 1 and 2. Bioshock 2, if you guys are not familiar, allows you to play as the Big Daddy, which was one of the main characters in Bioshock 1. A very scary dude, basically, in a um, high-pressure suit. Um, how can I put this? Bioshock 2 is a good game. I haven't gotten ridiculously far into it. I completed Bioshock 1, however. But I think the world of Rapture was better explored how you originally felt because big dad is when you realize you're playing one i mean are supposed to be like this big lumbering dude and yet you just don't feel like that you feel like you're light-footed and it just you know there are times that you get to go outside in honesty which is really cool and um, i would recommend checking that out for the price whether it's worth it or not it depends i personally quite like it i don't think it's amazing um I think, honestly, if you're looking for a Bioshock experience, the first one is probably a better one. But there you have it. Next one, Doom 3, the BFG edition. Uh, basically, id Software made some really big changes to this one, including, I believe it's called The Lost Missions. By the way, if you want to play through The Lost Missions, check it out on RGT. I have a playthrough of it, and I also have a first impressions of Doom 3 itself. Doom 3 is a really good game. Um... The BFG edition has fixed a few issues, such as not being able to hold a flashlight and a weapon at the same time. That does have one slight impact in that it makes the game a lot less darker. In fact, I actually think they boosted the gamma up a little bit, which makes the game more fun and actiony, but it also takes away some of the scariness. Um, I think the issue for Doom 3 players was, oh, by the way, there was a set of mods for the original Doom 3, which allowed you to have the flashlight out at the same time. Um, I like Doom 3, BFG Edition. You can definitely notice some improved textures, although you will notice that geometry in some places looks a bit old. Um, but to be honest with you, the game's like, I can't even remember how old they are, 2004 or something like that. And someone's probably going to correct me, and I don't actually remember the exact release date. I know it was quite a long ass time ago. Anyway, it was around the Radeon 9800, 9700 release, something like that. Anyway, uh, it's a good game for 9.99. Oh, by the way, it also, of course, includes Doom 1 and 2 and stuff like that. Um, in my opinion, Doom 1 is a definitely a game that you'll want to play and is the most influential, probably, first-person shooter ever for most people. I know Doom 2 had a huge modding community, but to be honest with you, to the average person, Doom 1 is the one that really made the difference. Doom 2 was a really good game. And Doom 3, some people love it, some people hate it. I quite liked it, uh, to be honest. I really liked it. Whether you want to cough up for this one is up to you. I would recommend it if you would so desire. I just realised I've been talking for a long ass time on this particular video. It's going on for longer than normal. Uh, what else? Uh, ah, yes. One could quantum conundrum. I actually really like Quantum Conundrum. It's a physics-based game, and if you are a fan of, let's go with, let's say, Portal, then you'll quite like this one. It has a certain blend of humour. You could also pick up the DLC for it, uh, which is also on offer if you happen to own the game and not the DLC. 
I would recommend checking out the RGT video on this one. It has a certain graphic style and physics and so on that, well, let's just say, may not be to everyone's taste. I quite liked it. I expected the game to do better. It didn't sell amazingly. It didn't sell terribly, but it didn't sell as well as I thought it would, considering people absolutely adore Portal. Next up, Lone Survivor. I haven't played this one. It's actually one of the few games on the sale I haven't actually played. Um, I believe it was Amata who's played it. Actually, yeah, I can definitely tell you have, because I'm looking at her Steam, and she has indeed played it, as well as Spoony Kipper, apparently. Um... I can tell you that this game is really, really, really well received, and indeed the people who have played it have told me it's really good. I can't tell you much more. It's actually possible Amata has popped up a video online with Survivor on RGT. I'm not promising, I'm not 100% sure. I would recommend checking it out just to see on our channel. I cannot guarantee it, however. I believe she said she might have covered it. Next one, Dragon Age Origins. This is a fairly oldish game, and by old I mean you know, a couple of years back, but in honesty, this game has some really strokes of brilliance in it. It has some issues, um, predominantly the way that the story is told. Um, I quite like the character development, and it was also really controversial on release, if I remember correctly, because you could actually have gay or lesbian affairs, and that seemed to really offend quite a lot of people. I don't actually know why, but anyway. Uh, anyway, you can pick up the Dragon Age Origins Ultimate Edition, which basically includes Awakening uh, and all the other nine content packs, and I quote on nine. It's actually five ninety nine, which is a pretty good price, actually. Or, if you really desire it, you could pick up the uh, Steam Guide for two ninety nine, or you could pick up some other bits and pieces uh, as well. I would recommend probably just plumping for the 70% off five ninety nine one. This has really good voice acting talent uh, in it, which is good. The character is definitely going to be very memorable, and the story is told in a really interesting way. I personally did not like Dragon Age 2. Uh, I know some people really did like it. And I know a couple who are massive fans of it. I personally think that Dragon Age 2 didn't handle the game that well. And to be honest with you, I thought the combat sucked. Uh, I'll just be frankly honest. I thought, however, that the first one was very good. And it basically handled character development really well. I'm not saying it was a perfect game, and indeed, for some reason or another, it was one of those titles I absolutely adored, but then I just didn't complete. If I remember correctly, something happened to my save, unfortunately. He says not bitterly at all. Um, this is definitely one of those titles, as I mentioned earlier, with adult themes, so if you get easily offended with stuff, then, you know, you might want to, I don't know, ask your parents' permission or something. Other than that, I would recommend the game Thoroughly. It's probably not to everyone's taste. Um, it does have a certain element and style that is could could be considered hardcore, uh, but I like it a lot, and I would recommend it. It's actually a really good PC port as well. Uh, it works really well on keyboard and mouse, and I believe I would not want to play this one on a console, not because of the graphics so much, just because of the controls. Anyway, he says exhausted. I think that's everything. I know I went really into painstaking detail on this one, and I can only apologise. But anyway, I think it's better for me just to give you all my feedback and knowledge, if you will. Uh, as usual, if you would like to hear about Borderlands, Deus Ex, F1, Chivalry, uh, what else? Total War, and Mark of the Ninja, you can check out, which of course are yesterday's deals. You can check out yesterday's video, where I, of course, go into everything. Not quite in as much detail as this one. This one seemed to be really long, as there were so many games I knew and loved it had to be talked about in painstaking detail. So anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, and if you would give comments on it, we will, I believe, have one more video tomorrow. And actually, I might release two Um one which will be covering all of the uh, that day's deals and the next one which will be covering all of the kind of hidden developers deals or you know um, bits and pieces basically that haven't been mentioned elsewhere Ooh, one little thing it's actually possible I won't release that uh, video for the day's deals if it's possible that 
all of the deals have already been done a few times before. For example, it's possible that Batman Arkham City, Dishonored, and something else will be there again. Who the hell knows? Anyway. Uh, so anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Pa apologies for rambling on. Hopefully you've enjoyed it anyway. So take care of yourselves. Bye for now.